to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. As you can see, it's another one of those like double trouble ones where me and Tistano shoot two episodes of the same thing. You're doing the cardboard cutout. <laughs> I thing. know, I know. Stop doing it. It <laughs> freaks me out. How are you doing? I'm alright. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm a lot better that you're moving now. All right, good. Um, and today I figured we'd talk about something that's been crossing my mind a little bit. Mm. And that is when it comes to collecting watches. Yeah. Is there like a perfect collection size, or how much is too much? Like how much is too many pieces? Right, yeah. Does, you know? Do do you I, feel that way? I've Does been con- contemplating this very very recently, but more from a financial <laughs> point of view. Well, I think it's always financial. If yeah. I was a billionaire, I'd own all the watches. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but before we get started, wristwatch yeah. oh, check. Yes. Yes. Uh, Orient Black Ray Two. Just, I mean, I've had to put it on a black uh, NATO. NATO. Just, uh, it's, it looks. Really it's actually a really freaking good looking watch. For it the is. Price. It is unbelievable price. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I'm rocking the Breitling Chronomat Evolution. Um, you know, once again, summer is over. I said it in your video too. Yeah. I'm busting out the alligator and the leather dial's pieces. Blue. Uh, no, the dial's black panda, and it's got the blue anti-reflective coating. It looks so blue. It, it depends how the light hits it. Right, because so it cool didn't look blue that. a little while ago. Yeah, it's, you know, when the light shines. Yeah, those, those are numerals. Gorgeous. I like those because Breitling usually does sticks. Yeah. And this kind of dresses yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love high polish cases. It's very, very nice. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> so, yeah, collection sizes. Yes, um, yes. Let's talk about that. I have got... Actually, believe it or not, this is how unprepared I am. I don't know how many pieces I have in my collection. But I'm going to say it's about... 12. Right, I think, yeah, God, I don't even know. I think probably it's between 10 and 20. Fair enough. <laughs> That's all I know. Well, because, <laughs> see, for me, you know, in, in the high-end part yeah. of my collection, I yeah. consider high-end anything that's four figures, like a $1,000 and up, is because mm. that's something that you have to think before you buy it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got probably... Well, I must admit, I, I, I spend hours obsessing if it's a... You know, forty dollar sake. Well, five sure, or... but but for me, let's say I want it, but yeah. it's like a thousand and above. Yeah. Like I think about it for like a while. A you while. know, more than obsessing. Right, it's... right, right. You 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 leave it for a few weeks, come back to it. Yeah. Do I still feel the same way? Exactly. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I've probably got about six pieces mm-hmm. in my collection that are that, and only one piece so far in the five figures, and then the other piece that's coming, guys. Thank you for your patience. Here's the update. I will let you know as soon as it arrives. Stop leaving comments. <laughs> Which piece is this? The one that I'm unboxing that I got from Asia that took oh, forever to source. Oh, is it still? It's um. <laughs> here's the thing. Yeah. The one I originally ordered. Yeah. I paid for it. It became unavailable. Right. And the guy's like, "I'll refund you your money," and I'm like, "You already have the money, so let's pick something else." Something so else. I, you know, I, but I'm not revealing what it is. Right. And then when it does arrive, I'll reveal what it was supposed to be. And what it actually right. is. Is it the same brand? Uh, no. Or is it a different brand? A different brand. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to say anymore. Different brand. Different okay. brand. Okay. Right. Um, but yeah, so I've only got currently one piece in the five figures. Right. Um, plus one coming. Nice. So, so yeah, that, that's pretty much my collection, you mm-hmm. know. And But I think you're, you're probably very similar because you've got some expensive pieces too. Yeah, I, I, I am. But I am starting to find that... I mean, you guys, I don't know if you're aware, but I actually did sell my Speedmaster in the end. And um, it was more financial. I just... You can always get it back. Exactly. You can always get it back. And I'm in a bit of a quandary at the moment. I've got medical bills to pay. I don't feel it's necessary having sitting on like, you know, five, six luxury time pieces. That's the beautiful thing about watch collecting. Um, I always say, you know, don't invest in watches, but if you buy right you can pretty much get your money back yeah. in times of need, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so. thing is, it's that, you know, I've got the Navi and now the, the Tissot returned. The Tissot mm-hmm. really is the speedy. I love it. You should have never sold that thing. I, I told know, you. I, I know, tell you every I time you bring it up. I know, I know, I know. But it's it's the speedy killer, you know. It, yeah. To me, it's 37 millimeters. It, I feel a lot closer with that watch than the speedy fund. It's also yeah. less common. You know, I always yeah, exactly, speedy, exactly. I, I love it, but for yeah. me, the uniqueness is part yeah. of it too. Hey, sorry, sorry, I'm going, we're going off on a speedy tangent, but what I was trying to say was, I'm starting to find less is a little bit more. 
I agree with you. But not not super less. Like I, I would love <laughs> not super not less. Not super less. I would love to ha- be one of those people that has three watches and that's it. You well, know? here's the thing I, I know. It's not going to happen though. As you continue, as we get older yeah. and we spend more years in this hobby, mm. collections shrink. Mine, and, mine goes up and down. Uh, yeah, but I'm saying in the long run. In like the long run, If you were right, to stretch it right, out. Right, right. Because, and they shrink and they tend to get more expensive. Because a lot of people ask me, Federico, what should I buy? You know, I've got a ton of these options. I guess it's like women. We settle in here. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's not go, go down that road. <laughs> right, okay. And let's not tell your wife you settled, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you uh, She's not going to watch That's this. not getting cut out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, what I mean is that you you find you find that connection, you find that companion, mm. the the watches that because you have to experience them and you're right, you know. But there's there's something I find new collect. There's a trap the new okay. collectors fall into, yeah. and I think a okay, I fall into it sometimes. Yeah. I think occasionally you do as well, but right. it, it stops with experience, right. and that is buying a ton. Yeah. Of entry level or mid range pieces. Now hold on, guys. Yeah. I love the entry level. I love my Seiko SKX. Yeah. I love the mid level. But sometimes you're like, they're only two hundred bucks a pop. You buy six or seven of them. Yeah, but because that... you can. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and and you only really love two or three. I'm sure you like all seven. Yeah. I'm not using you as an example. No, actually, but... you should because I'm a prime example. Because if you look at all my mid range pieces, the the Zin one hundred four, the Squally one five two one. The Oris Aquis. Um, there's a few more. The Glycine uh, Air, uh, Combat, Combat sub. sub. I had to experience them all because I can't go into an AD and, and wear and, them. Yeah, exactly. Not exactly. So I had to have my time with them. And in the end, I mean, I'm still think I still want to get an Aquis and get for the third time, which is crazy. Yeah, sure, but it's part of the beauty. Yeah. rotating in and but out. But the one that stayed, the one that I connected with the most, was the Squire. Yeah, and I can I can see why it's beautiful. Yeah, and it's not going anywhere. But the trap is, yeah. You know, those things add up. Oh yeah. You know, because yeah, yeah, like yeah. if if you buy like five two hundred dollar watches, can it's I? It's a thousand bucks. Can I say something? Though? Yeah. One of them didn't lose a penny. Can you guess which one it is? Uh, I think most of them. I think most of them might not lose a penny if you buy them correctly. Right, right. But those probably the squalor. Because they're so rare to find. Right. You can only really buy them. Yeah. I'm not saying Squad is a good investment. I'm saying yeah. you can only yeah, find yeah. them where you can find them. Right. Am I right? Close. Probably number two would be this Squad, but it was the Zin. I didn't lose a penny. But once again, it's such yeah. a, a. I mean, it's not a micro brand, but you can only buy it from one place. In yeah, it, right. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. So, so, guys, I'm not saying don't enjoy the mid range. Yeah. I'm just saying before you go out, and you get like your sixth Seiko for the month of September. Yeah. You could have so gotten difficult. something. You could have gotten something you re- you that, really wanted. Because people say a thousand bucks is so much money. Yeah. You just spend a thousand bucks on five watches. Yeah, yeah. But Seikos, so you know how many Seikos I still want. It's ridiculous. Oh no, you know? me too. And listen, yeah. I fall into this trap. Yeah. All you know, all the time. Um, listen, I really want a sumo. I really want a monster. Yeah. And I really want a sar. Right. And, you know, I was tallying that up. That's like $1,700. You yeah. Know? So I made a decision. Pick one. Right. You know, so I'll, I'll, I'll probably do like two mid-range pieces a year. Mm. Mid-range, anything under 1000 mm. Two a year. That way it doesn't suck money mm. from mm. like my gold Rolex or my Roger Dubuis that I mm. want to buy mm. or my Lange. Because mm. listen, it all adds mm. up. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You know, so, you know, and I think as we evolve as collectors, mm. I think, I, I, I've noticed at least, I'm not, it sh- shouldn't be true for everybody, but I've noticed collections get smaller mm. and more expensive. Right, this is so funny because the video that I'm putting up today as we're shooting this, it will be mm-hmm. days past now as you're watching this, but I, I discuss a little bit about that trajectory because some people are on that. You know, yeah, they are. and other people they 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 call it quits at the SKX. It's just like, oh, that's a more than enough for me, and I I completely respect. Listen, either if, if I wasn't a watch guy, yeah, and I I wasn't a watch guy, but I needed to watch one watch, I'd be happy with just my SKX. Yeah, 
but I'm a watch guy. Would you ever have like a three or five or just a super small collection? I think I'd be able to nail it at like, I'd happily do five. Yeah. I can probably do four, but if it was four, each piece would be pretty expensive. Right. You know, just because like I wouldn't, I love the Seiko, yeah. but if I have four and money's not an issue, I'm not using a slot on the Seiko. Right. You know, I'd probably go like... I understand, I understand. You know, Gold Sub, Long and Sona, yeah. Patek Philippe, F.P. Jorn. That, that's why I kind of... I didn't introduce the term. I, I, I might, might have heard it somewhere else, but the, the term keepers, your keepers of the collection. Yeah. Yeah. I quite like that. And sometimes a keeper can go, you, you lose that connection. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea of, oh, well, you know, I have 10 watches, but this five or this four, those are my keepers. Yeah. You know, so I think, yeah, I, I agree with you, but that's why I think when I'm trying to narrow down my collection, mm. I don't count pieces like an SKX as part of the collection because they're not a financial burden. You know, I, 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 don't, do, I, don't, right? I don't feel guilty if I don't wear it. I would never get rid of it. Yeah. I would never get rid of an SKX because yeah. my collection is too big. I'd get rid of like a Rolex or something. Right. But I'd keep an SKX just because it's two hundred bucks. It's not hurting anybody. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna you make know, any money from one, selling it. One day, ten years from now, somebody watching this and an SKX will not be two hundred bucks. I certainly hope so. But yeah. my point is, I feel guilty. Yeah. Let's say I have five ten thousand dollar watches. Mm. I'd feel guilty if one of them didn't get any wrist time. Yes, well, that's why I sold the speed. Whereas if the SKX yeah. doesn't get any wrist time, yeah. I don't feel guilty at all. It's 200 bucks. But I might wake up one day after 90 days of not wearing and be like, oh, that's cool. Let's slap yeah. that on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's my point. Yeah. You know, I, it's there's just, a, I don't there's feel There's a bad. lot to discuss there. I mean, the whole thing of collecting, it's, it's such, there's so many angles, there's so many questions, so many things to consider. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, guys, we probably have to make a multi-series, yeah. yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, a yeah, multi-episode series about this. But we have to run. Unfortunately, Cristano is late for a little bit of a, an appointment you have. Yes. Yeah. So we'll leave it there. But guys, if you don't know this man, TGV, shame on you if you're not subscribed. <laughs> Link in the description below. I'm Federico, of course. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy it. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Ciao. Take care.